This is the Alfero Laser 2. It's kind of like if you took the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, you combined it with the Alfero Laser 1, and they had a baby, you'd wind up with this machine. Now let's see if you can take the pros of those other two machines, but not take any of the cons. All right, so let's jump into it. So Otour or Archer or however you say it, probably the most popular laser diode company out there currently, and they've been putting out a cheaper Alfero line as of last year, where they put out the Alfero 1, which is a cantilever design, meaning it's got a smaller work area as well as a smaller top speed but because of that this is usually only a couple hundred bucks so they basically took that and put it into a larger square frame to give us the Alfero laser and I'm gonna give you my overall recommendation here right off the bat. If you're wanting to get into diode lasers, you've never used one before, this is honestly a really good option. This is usually about $100 cheaper than the Bigger Brother Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, but I think this is an awesome option, especially because these laser modules are interchangeable. You don't have to stick with just the one that it gives you, which some other machines don't let you do. So on the assembly side of things, it is pretty simple. Really, you're just attaching eight screws to put together these four sections, and then you're gonna put your gantry here in the middle. You do have to run a couple wires, but that's not a big deal, and then you drop in your laser module. Now, this probably took me about 30 minutes to put together, so it's really not a huge deal on that end. So it's pretty standard in terms of the frame. Probably the biggest difference is the frame isn't black, but I think this is more of like the raw aluminum with the coating on top of it. It is a full metal frame, including the actual feet, which is nice. Sometimes in the past, those have been acrylic, which really doesn't affect anything, um, but it's just nice to have it all metal. They're advertising that this gantry gives you a lower center of gravity, and this is dropped down pretty much as far as you can get. And what's great about that is it gives it more stability versus having like your weight way up here, um, when this would be going back and forth really quick, it could wobble. But there's no wobble on this, really stable, really strong. In terms of the work area, this is 390 by 390 millimeters, which is just a little bit shy of the Pro, which is 400 by 400. And this is a good bit smaller than the more expensive Xtool D1, which is actually right back there, which is like 430 by 406 millimeters. If you do wind up having a workpiece that is bigger than the machine itself, you can just drop it on top of it. And then you might have to work with the software to readjust your design and kind of move this into the right spot. For the most part, for the things especially that I do, I'm not getting much bigger than 12 by 12 inches anyway. So this is more than capable to do that. And just for comparison, this is the Alfero one. I don't have the laser attached to it. Again, these are replaceable, so that's why the cable's hanging off. But you can definitely see just the work area is a lot smaller with this guy versus this one because this is a cantilever, so there's no support over here. Um, it's pretty easy for this to tilt. And that is also why this one is a good bit cheaper. Now here is the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And you can see what I'm talking about with the gantry, how this one is raised up a little bit higher than this one. It's on a much larger support on the side, and because of that, the actual rail where this mounts is up higher. Now it also has the Z-axis adjustment on it as well, but overall having this rail lower is nicer with this machine, even versus the more expensive Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. Now the cables are another difference between this machine and the Pro. The Pro actually has a track that the cables run in versus these being loose. This never really has been a big issue for me in general, um, but it's a little bit nicer that the Pro cleans it. But the Pro even has this cable loose as well. Now in terms of motors, this has NEMA 17s, which is the same as the Pro, which is pretty much standard across most of these diode machines. It's got one right here, and this drives the X-axis, and actually has two on the left and the right that are driving the Y-axis, with the belts on either side underneath these rails. And it's nice having two, so if this is driving, this doesn't rack. You can imagine if it only had one of the stepper motors, it would drive this side and it might cause some racking with the rail, but having two keeps that from happening. But that is also kind of the drawback of this machine in that it doesn't have limit switches. And all limit switches do is they let you know when the machine is at the end. This machine does not have that meaning that you're not gonna be able to home your machine inside of the software. So it's not gonna know like the zero, zero position. So you're always gonna to have to work with relative coordinates, meaning basically wherever this laser module is when you start, that's where it's going to assume that the zero position is on your machine, which is fine, but you just have to be careful you're not going to engrave things that are too big or outside the range of the machine. Now, the Laser Master 2 doesn't have two limit switches on the Y-axis, it just has this one right here on the, I guess, left side when you're looking at it, and then one up here for the x-axis but it doesn't have one over here but instead there is a rod that is running 
across the entire Y axis. So these two stepper motors actually can't spin independent of each other, but they do give you two, so you get even power between both sides. But this is how they're keeping both of those stepper motors in sync, as well as the X axis square to the Y frame. But when we flip it to the Alfaro, you can see we do not have a rod like that and we don't have limit switches at all. So one thing I found I've had to do a few times is I'll actually push this all the way up to where it is physically hitting the ends on both sides. Then I actually move the laser to the position I want inside of the software. Because at that point, I know this is square, and so if I'm moving it in the software, everything's gonna be good. Versus if I just moved it by hand, there's a chance that I could get one of these sides off, which is gonna cause issues. And overall, I would say that's probably the biggest difference between the Alfaro 2 and the Laser Master Graver 2 Pro. But with my testing and all the things that I've run so far, I really haven't run into an issue as long as I'm careful to keep both of those sides in sync before I start my engrave or cut. Okay, so let's actually talk about the laser module. First off, I've been saying this is a modular design. So there is a set screw right here. You unscrew that and then this whole piece can come off. Then you just plug in the cables up here and this rail will work with the other laser modules. Now the module they included with this unit was the LU2-4SF. Now this is 4.5 watts and on the Xtool D1, there's a 10 watt version, the Atom Stack, as well as the Niji, they all have 10 watt options. Right now with Otour, these are the strongest ones that you can get but what's really interesting with these is they actually have different versions of this one specifically so they have an LU2-4 short focus which is this guy they also have an LU2-4 long focus which is this guy and this one is designed specifically for cutting so it has more strength because of the focal range and this one is pretty cool too as well because this nozzle also lets you do air assist which is an add-on that lets you do with pretty much any of their machines now they're claiming the short focus is great more for engraving meaning that it it's going to have a smaller laser dot than the long focus, which has a bigger one. We're gonna do some tests. That's gonna show you the results of both, specifically with this module. But if you are interested to see what the long focus does, as well as kind of their in-between LU2-2, I reviewed all of these modules on the Alfaro Laser 1 review, but I have found that the short focus actually is pretty nice and usually winds up being the one that I go with. Plus, this is kind of random. This is just held on by a magnet. Um, this is just saving your eyes and it just pops on. Pretty easy to use. So the height adjustment on this is pretty easy. Again, that set screw, you just loosen it up and you can slide it up and down that rail. They provide a piece of acrylic that is like a spacer. And so you just put it on top of your material, you drop your laser module down on top of it, and then you remove the piece of acrylic and you tighten everything up and then you are focused. So still pretty easy to focus, definitely not as hard as like the Niji where you have to completely unscrew something with an Allen key, but not quite as easy as the Xtool D1, which has a little spacer that is built in and that can flip down. Now another add-on that Otour has is their Z-axis height adjustment, which just gives you a knob here at the very top, which I actually already have attached to the Pro. And so you just screw this up and you screw this down is an attachment that you can add to this machine as well for an extra cost. And one thing I do wanna give props to Otour for is they are advertising the power of this laser by the actual power output of the laser. They call this a 5.5 watt laser versus the amount of power they have going into the unit, which is like 40 watts and up. And a lot of manufacturers will advertise the power input, which makes it really confusing, especially when you compare this to a CO2 laser, which on the bottom end starts at 40 watts. And that 40 watts is way more powerful than the 5.5 watt laser diode. And if you ever see a laser diode that is advertised more than 10 or 15 watts, they're not giving you the output and just be cautious what you're actually going to wind up getting. And that's a way better comparison between diode lasers and then CO2 machines, which actually are 40 watts and up. So on the safety side of things, it's got pretty much the standard ones. It's got a gyroscope that is a tilt sensor. So if you pick this up, the laser will turn off. If power disconnects, obviously the laser will turn off. It can still draw power from just your USB to your computer. If the laser module stays in one spot for too long, it will automatically cut it off. That's built directly into the firmware and the motherboard. 
And just on your eye safety side of things, this module comes um, just with this piece of acrylic and this will filter out a good bit of the light that is not great for you. But with all of these machines that don't have an enclosure, always make sure you're wearing glasses because you're still gonna get light that's going to come out even at the very bottom that's gonna bounce around that could hurt your eyes. And on the LU2-2, they have this guy, which is actually removable that attaches right in as well as with this one, most of it is covered up, but at the very end, it is exposed. So with any of those laser diodes, make sure you're using glasses. So on the connection side of things, you've got USB as well as ethernet, pretty standard. And then you have just a power and a reset switch. This pretty much works with anything that is out there. Laser Gerbil is your free option, but the piece of software that I love using is Lightburn. There is one unique thing you need to do with this machine versus the Pro. I was finding that Lightburn was giving me some errors basically because it doesn't have limit switches and so it couldn't find the zero on the machine. So if you're getting something like that, it, Inside of the console, inside of Lightburn, if you type in pound X, that'll basically unlock the machine and then it's going to be good to go. It took me like 30 minutes of searching to figure out what was going wrong. So hopefully that saves you some time. Okay, so let's talk about some quick tests that I've done. If you've watched any of the other reviews that are out there, you'll probably see a bunch of different materials. You'll basically get an idea of what any of these machines can do. But what I wanna do is give you a comparison between this and those other machines. So what I like to do is run just an overall test file. They'll give me an idea of the engraving power, the width of the laser dot, as well as the cutting strength. And this is what I wound up with. Now this is three millimeter birch plywood, and you can see you are going to get pretty good engraving, pretty much all the way up to even 9,000 millimeters per minute. You can kind of tell as the speed is going up, um, the Christmas, the, <laughs> the Christmas, the crispness of those boxes, it starts to get a little bit wobbly. So I really wouldn't run this much faster than 5,000 millimeters per minute. It, so half of the maximum speed. That's why those max speed numbers are never really a big deal for me because you're really limited by the power of the laser. Even the 10 watt laser diodes, you're gonna run into some of those shaking issues. And so even those, I won't run much over six or 7,000 millimeters per minute. But in terms of engraving, you get a really good range. And especially at like a thousand millimeters per minute and 100% power, you're going in pretty deep into this birch plywood, which kind of translates over to its cutting power. So since this is the short film, Focus. This isn't optimized for cutting. That's what you're gonna use your long focus one for. But even with this module, you're gonna be able to cut at 100 millimeters per minute at 75% power and then obviously up from there. Now I'll also throw up the results from some of the 10 watt units and you can see that those are way more powerful than this laser module, obviously because you're comparing 10 watts to 5.5 watts. This gives you a pretty good comparison. Did do a couple engraving tests just because those are fun to see. Now this is a scrap piece of wood that actually has some stuff that is carved out on a CNC, so ignore that. But you can see that's the Mandalorian head. And this is basically that engraving test, but with an actual picture, because sometimes it's good to see kind of how the different gradients inside a picture will work. And so I use that to kind of dial in. I love doing anything Mandalorian, but because the Book of Boba Fett is out right now, I thought I would show this frame, which I guess is still the Mandalorian and his ship. But speaking of the Mandalorian on cherry, you can definitely see the grain in this wood. So you can see how your final image is going to be affected. Uh, but I do find cherry will darken up pretty good. It's a pretty good option for doing any types of pictures. But overall, in terms of the picture performance, this does a good job compared to all the other ones out there as well. Now the biggest thing that's going to impact the resolution of those pictures that you're engraving is going to be the size of the laser dot. And I actually like to test out the size of that. What I basically do is take a line that this has engraved, put it under a video microscope, take a picture and blow it up and we'll check out the size of that right now. So looking at the short focus module on the website, you can see they're giving us a 0.119 in the Y direction and a 0.15 in the X. So I'm finding something pretty similar. Actually in the X, I'm getting about 0.17 or so. And then the Y I'm getting about 0.18. So this is a little bit bigger than the Two Trees TS3, um, but it's smaller than the Laser Pecker as well as the Niji. So kind of right in the middle. Again, this is for the short focus. So the long focus module as well as the LU2-2 are going to be a little bit different as well. Now, another thing I've been playing around with is seeing what is the cut depth that this thing can go through. Basically, any of these laser modules are going to have a distance where that laser is focused at its smallest point, but that point can extend different distances depending on what you're looking at. That's one reason they have this long focus.
focus because it has a longer distance. But I've seen them advertise a couple pictures where you could kind of see how that works. So I tried to replicate it the best I could. It's kind of a janky setup. All this is is a clear piece of acrylic. I'm firing the laser pretty low power, but you can see right here the distance that this is pretty much in focus. What that means is as this is cutting through thicker material, the laser is going to be going further and further down. So the longer that it can stay in focus, the longer you're going to have your full power going all the way down. The higher end, especially CO2 machines, they'll actually lower the laser between each of those passes, whether they're using a depth sensor or they actually have a camera system like the Glowforge. These don't have that. So basically the only way around that is having a laser module that is long enough to get all the way through your material. But again, at five and a half watts, you're really not going to be going through anything that thick anyway. But this range, I'll put the number right here because I haven't measured it yet, but I do know it's going to be more than enough to get through, especially like three millimeter plywood, maybe five millimeter plywood. Most of the stuff you're going to be doing with a five and a half watt diode laser. Now, if you're going to be getting a laser or you already have a laser, the biggest tip I can give you is to do a lot of testing to figure out the settings that are going to work best for you in your situation with your machine and your material. I like to do a lot of tests, especially this test file. It gives me a really good idea in terms of engraving as well as power. So I know how to dial in my settings and you can download that yourself at the link down below. It's a light burn file, so you can open it directly inside of there and they're going to be good to go. Okay, so let's compare this in terms of value to the other machines from O-Tour. At the time of this recording, this is about 370 bucks. The Laser 1 is 330 bucks. And honestly, that $40, I feel like is a no-brainer in terms of nearly doubling the work area size, just having something that is more robust. But if you do need something that is really small, the Laser 1 is still an option for you. Uh, but because this is so light, and actually this is small in terms of like how thick it is, uh, I hang these up on the wall. It's not a super big deal to store. Also, this speed goes up all the way to 10,000 versus the Laser 1 I think is at 5,000. Now where it gets interesting is when you compare this to the Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. That machine right now is 480 bucks, but we'll just say it's about $100 more than this. That $100 is basically getting you a little bit more work area, not a ton. They're getting some limit switches so you can always zero your machine and you can work from like an absolute zero inside of Lightburn. It's got some better capabilities management and it does have an emergency stop button and a siren here on the front so a couple safety features that this one doesn't have but if it was me and I had to pick between the two and the budget really was a pretty big deal I probably would just go this way doing all my designs and carves without knowing the zero position just doing it relative isn't a huge deal to me personally the emergency stop is nice on the other machine but you can also just yank out the power it's pretty much just as fast and then in terms of the actual laser ring this thing still has the same top speed as the pro and then the laser modules literally are the same because you can just buy whichever one you want between the different machines. I would spend that extra hundred on the attachment you can get that lets you easily adjust the Z axis. They also have an external controller as well as especially you can get a pretty cheap air assist that will help keep any of the flames down and it'll also give you better engraving and cutting results. So I really think this is a really nice sweet spot for these diode machines. Now, how would I compare this to the larger 10 watt units? Now those will typically be at least a couple hundred dollars more if not more, but you are getting a much more powerful laser diode. The XTool D1 is still the nicest one I've tested. So not only are you paying for more power with that one, you're just paying for a more robust unit. But there are also rumors that Otour is coming out with a 10 watt laser module in the future. And if that's the case, it's going to be really easy to replace the one that it currently has. So if this had a 10 watt unit and it was in the same price range, I might would lean this direction. But again, that's in the future. So if you need the power, get a more expensive machine. Machine. And if you don't need the power, this one could be a great option for you. Now we've been talking about the Alfero Laser 1 a ton. We're going to get into that review right now and see if the cheapest machine from Otour could fit your needs. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.